first we're going to talk about who's heard of the word um, confessions before. Okay, how about, um, let's see, counsel. Yeah? Um, what else do I have here? Okay, we talked about creeds just now. What about this last word, catechisms? You've heard of catechisms? Can someone tell me what catechisms mean? It's like having to do with Catholics, and it's like something that they study to go to catechism class. Okay, I have heard of it like that. There's one more definition, though. Anybody tell me? Yeah. Is it something to do with, like, a catalyst? Oh, what? A catalyst? Um, I don't think so, but I see where you can get that. Guys, today we're going to study the differences between creeds, confessions, catechisms, and councils. Okay? And then we're going to dive into one more creed, which I want, because you know that the Apostle Creed isn't the only creed, right? We're going to kind of, you know, compare and contrast these two creeds. So before we get started, I want you guys to write down four words and give like three lines to each word, okay? The first one is creeds. Everybody have that down? Next word is going to be confessions. Caleb, okay, make sure you're writing this down, okay? All right, what's the next word? Our next word is catechism. Let me spell this out for you guys. Thumbs up if you got catechism so far. Almost? All right. Let me, guys, let me give you guys a word. It's hard to see this board, right? It's kind of little. And the last one is council. We're going to get through a whole ton of information, but it's going to be really good. Are you guys, are you guys with me? I'm going to take a big deep breath. Everyone say good morning. Good night. No, <laughs> good night. <laughs> this cuts out. Okay, creeds. Let's talk about creeds. We talked about where the word creed comes from, right? Anybody remember what that word was? Credo. Okay, that, can you guys write that word down for me? And the definition of credo is me, uh, to believe. It's just to believe. Who's in my Spanish classes? Woo! Oh, I talk Woo! Spanish. Um, let's say this. Does the word credo sound like anything in Spanish? Creed. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Creo. What is it? Crayon? <laughs> Not crayon. Creo. Right. And what does creo mean? Yo creo que blank, blank, blank. Chase? To believe in. You guys see kind of where we got that word? Creeds. And here's the definition of creeds. It is a basic summary of Christian beliefs. Basic summary of Christian beliefs. <clears throat> write, um, write that down once you do. I need you guys to open up your Bibles. And we're going real Old Testament today to the book of Deuteronomy. Yes. What chapter? Six. Deuteronomy six, verse four. You guys might have to use your table. So we've talked about councils, right, and all of that. It could be kind of, or I mean, creeds, and it's kind of like modern. For the day, for them, it was like the modern beliefs, right? They brought together all the beliefs. But, like we just said, catechi or sorry, creeds, it's just like a basic belief system, right? Can someone read for me Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, nice and loud? Um, yeah, go for it, nice and loud, though. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Nice. And actually, you know, I keep going for five. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Okay, thanks. That's perfect. So, what are a couple of things that that verse just said? You can say it verbatim. Love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul. Okay, what else? Specifically in verse 4. <coughs> the Lord is what? One. Yes, the Lord is one. Would you say that that's kind of like a basic belief of Christianity? 
the Lord God is one. So they, they call this, and everyone write this word down, it's called Shema. Is this S- under H- creeds? What's that? Is this under yes, creeds? this is under okay. creeds. This would be considered the earliest, per se, some do, the earliest creed written. Yes? How do you spell it? Oh, sorry. Um, it's S-H-E-M-A. Shema. Everyone say Shema. Shema. Okay. Um, we're going to also read, let me have someone else read 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15. Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 4. Can someone read that for me nice and loud? <laughs> We've got it. Go for it, nice and loud. For what I have received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Yeah, cool. Would you guys say that's kind of a creed? Who, who, thumbs up if you would agree. Why would you say that's a creed? A basic understanding of the Christian faith. Anybody? Can you say that nice and loud? That's exactly it. You have to believe that he rose from the dead. Yeah. And let's say let's say that someone maybe doesn't believe that. <laughs> Right? That like, well, I don't know. Like, I don't know if Jesus really rose, right? Well, actually, Paul goes ahead and talks about that. Can someone read 12 through 14? I'm going to start calling on people. Okay. Caleb. Okay. I also saw Caleb. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it is preached that Christ has uh, been raised from the dead. How can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Is that keep going. Keep oh, going. okay. Uh, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. I keep going. Yeah, yeah, just 14 and then jump down to 17. Oh, awesome. Uh, and then Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith, or so is your faith. Okay, and 17? Uh, 17, let me scroll down. Uh, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and, uh, you are still in your sins. All right. What would you guys say about that? If I told you that's for sure a creed, why would you say that is a creed? What does it talk about? That's pretty fundamental. And being raised from the dead. Yeah. And, and what does he say if it didn't happen? What does Paul call our faith? Futile. Futile, right? So he's saying it's of utmost importance. Um, and he actually says um, in verse 3, For I delivered to you as of first importance that Christ died, right? And then he jumps over to verse 12, that not only did he die, but he rose again, right? Making our faith complete. Does that sound okay? Is that helpful? Cool. Okay. Um, let's do this. That's it for creeds. Now we are under confessions. Has anybody heard um, any kind of confessions or anything like that? There's a bunch of thing where there's like a priest, and there's like a weird... Oh, <laughs> yes, technically, yes, those are confessions. Um, but those are those are in the Catholic faith to um, for pardoning of sins. That's where a priest would say, your sins are forgiven by God. <laughs> um, okay, confessions. Everyone write down this. Um, Definition. Definition. Yeah, it's early for all of us. Um, Can I say okay, one can, thing, Mr. Yeah, go for it. Um, I know at times studying these kinds of things can seem a bit tedious and a bit drawn out, but you nailed it on the head when you said this gives um, concrete uh, foundation to our faith. Yeah, for sure. You know, and it, it, I don't know about you guys. And for you, I'm sure it does too. But I feel a sense of security mm-hmm. in my faith when I when I understand yeah, this better. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, confessions. <laughs> Let's keep on moving on. This is the definition I want you guys to write down. Um, often defines 
a particular group or denominations believe often defines a particular group group or denominations beliefs this is really important on secondary issues you got all that okay cool go ahead and look up at me once you're done yeah sure often defines a particular group or denominations beliefs and underlining this because this is so important on secondary issues thumbs up you guys got that cool so let's talk about that yes oh, I thought you raised your hand let's talk about the word secondary issues what would you guys say secondary issues are say it again I said not as important but not, not as important but still really important okay yeah go ahead. like not like going if you go to heaven or hell, but like something smaller, like if you lie to someone, should you receive death or like yeah, okay. stuff like that. Yeah. Let's talk about um, certain secondary issues that I have are things like, do you, anybody heard of like different views of like the end times mm -hmm. and yeah. all of that? Well, that's a whole, that's, there's so many different views of that, right? You have that, you have infant baptism. Have you guys been like in a conversation with people who say like, no, you put their head in, no, you sprinkle them, all those things? They can be really tedious, right? Well, guess what, guys? Those things sometimes makes a denomination what they are. Isn't that nuts? So, everybody have in um, the definition, anybody want me to repeat it? Or else we're going to keep on moving on. Cool? All right. The next word, catechisms. Can everyone write down catechisms? You have it? The definition of catechisms is book or document giving a brief summary of basic principles of sorry, of the basic principles of Christianity. Book or document giving a brief summary of the basic principles of Christianity in a Q and A format. Have you guys ever seen something like that? You have to memorize them in fifth grade? Dang, yeah, sure, sure, I'll repeat for you guys. Catechism's book or document giving a brief summary of the basic principles of Christianity in a Q&A format. Everybody have that? Anybody have to uh, memorize them? Ever before? Yeah, I you just told me to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Jared, what church were you in when you had to memorize this? Christ Perez. Presbyterian. Christ Perez. Mm -hmm. yeah. Catechism. Okay, here's the thing that's really cool about catechisms. When you answer something, that's kind of your confession, right? Like, your answer becomes a confession. Sometimes in most catechisms, your answer becomes a confession. We're going to keep on moving on. Are you guys with me? Is this helpful? Mm -hmm. Okay, councils. You guys ready for councils? Okay, definition is large church meetings. Bringing together leaders To hammer out issues, large church meetings bringing together leaders to hammer out issues such as heretical teachings, what teachings? heretical, you just want me to write that down? Yes, 
Heretical. I'm thinking All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Where did I leave off? Heretical teachings. Heretical teachings. Too difficult for a single pastor or one leader. Large church meetings bringing together leaders to hammer out issues such as heretical teachings too difficult for a pastor or one leader. Okay. Let's talk about um, heretical real quick. What does that mean? You guys heard that before? Heresy. Heresy is another for it. What does it mean? False. False teaching. Yeah, let me write that down. False teaching. So, the things that we're talking about at councils, guess what? That's actually where most of our creeds and confessions, things like that, come from. Okay, so we are going to talk about um, a certain council that kind of hammered out one of the most important things. Guys, guess what? We got through the hardest part. We're going to take another deep breath. Cool. We are going to talk about now. Oh, hold on a minute. Does your does your guys' word ever freak out on you? Yeah. Oh, it always does. I use pages. You use pages? Yes. I don't like word. Okay, do you guys still have the, the paper that we talked about on um the Apostles' Creed? Okay, go ahead. What? What? We did that yesterday. Okay, as many of you guys have it, go ahead and pull it out. Because we're going to be talking about it a little bit more. And I also need you guys to do one more thing. And you will need your phone, or any kind of laptop, or any device that you have. You guys can pull that out. Yeah, right now. It's already out. Okay. We will use it. So everybody have a piece of paper on the Apostles' Creed. Now, I need you guys to look up one thing on your phone, because what we're going to do right now is take some time to kind of talk, bless you, kind of talk about the difference between the Apostles' Creed right, and the Nicene Creed. Has anybody heard of that one? Yes. Where have you heard of it before? History class. Oh, history class. Okay, cool. So you might know a couple things we're going to talk about. Um, does anybody know off the top of their head some of the differences between them already? Don't remember. So I wanted to pull up the, the Nicene Creed on the TV, um, but for some reason it wasn't working. So what I'm going to have you guys do is raise your hand if you can find it on your phone, like on Google or something like that. We'll wait till at least most of you guys have it. And then I'm going to have you guys read it. It's a little long. It might take you like two minutes to read through it. And the first paragraph, don't get me wrong, guys, is hard. Kind of tricky. Okay? So let's do this. Thumbs up if you have that so far. Okay, let's wait for a couple more people to find it. And I'll, let me read the, the first part of it just um, to make sure that you guys have the right one, okay? So this is how it starts. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. Most people have that? Yeah, mine's a little bit different. A yeah, little bit different? That's okay. Seen and unseen. Yeah, oh, that's all right. Mine doesn't say I. You have to memorize this one? You have to memorize this one? Yeah. All right. Whoa, we're not going to do that. Don't worry. But let's do this, guys. I'm going to give you guys about two minutes just to read it individually, okay? Is that all right? All right, go for it.
Just about one more minute. All right, let's come back together. Who was able to read at least most of it? Cool? What do you guys think are some differences right off the bat, and I'm going to give you guys a clue, in the first paragraph or so, that's different from the Apostles' Creed? Okay. What it, what's like one of the main things it talks about? In one God? Yeah, keep going with that. It has to do with the idea of one God, but it's still being three people, right? What does it say about that? Can someone read for me like one of the sentences that kind of hammers out the Trinity? Yeah, yeah. Can you say it again? Uh, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Yeah, okay. So why, why, do you, why do you think it keeps on repeating things like that? Like one God, God from God, light from light. Any ideas why? Make it undisputable. Make what undisputable? The whole God from God, light from light. Thing. Yeah, okay, so what was going on? Let me catch you guys up on the history. Right now, there's this one man, okay? Kind of a, a little bit cuckoo, for sure. His name is Arius, and he's running around saying, there's no way that we can worship God and Jesus, because that's there's no way that you can fit three people in one. It just doesn't make sense, right? And guys, not everyone, not anyone truly understands the Trinity, okay? So it's not like this is like the almighty answer to this. But this is the best as we can get. And they did a really good job on doing this. Um, can someone read for me um, verse Hebrews 1, 3? Really quickly. Go ahead, nice and loud. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he has provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Yeah. Can you read the part that, that says Jesus is what of God? The sun is the radiance of, God, of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. The exact representation of his being. That's so important. That's what, kind of, that's what they were talking about. They were hammering out that issue because Arius was running around telling people, you either serve you know, one God or you're not a Christian. You either serve God or you're this polytheistic believer. You know what I mean? So why is that important? Why do you think that's so important for us to realize that Jesus is part of the Trinity and there is a Trinity? Go ahead. If Jesus like wasn't like part of the Trinity... And like he wouldn't have been worthy enough to like yes, the ultimate yes. sacrifice. Oh my Lord in heaven. Yes. <laughs> Guys, the truth is there's no way that a human being could have saved our sins. That makes sense? So I want you guys to write down two questions and then I'm gonna hand something out because we're gonna take the rest of the time to kind of wrestle with these two questions, okay? Everybody doing okay? Mm -hmm. We're good? All right, so write down these two questions and give it maybe five lines for each one, okay? We're going to try to write a paragraph for each one. Oh. Well, we'll do like three to five sentences. Okay. Everyone okay with that? As long as it's not like six. No, it's definitely not six. We'll never do six. Okay, who's ready for the first question? Okay, the first one is why is it critical that Jesus Christ is actually fully God. Why is it critical that Jesus Christ is actually and fully God? Everybody have that? Maybe. Okay, skip five lines, definitely not six lines. And this is the next question. Why can't, this is a funny word, but why can't a half God save humanity? 
Yeah, kind of, yeah. Why can't a half god save humanity? Everybody, yes, go ahead. What do you mean by half god? Um, do you know how it talks about that Jesus was fully God and fully man? Yeah. Why was it important for that to be so? Why could it, you know, why don't we think of it as like 50% God, 50% man? Does that make more sense? Is that helpful? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I printed these guys out. These are from my glory days in college. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I want you guys, with those questions, to use this to kind of look for those answers, okay? This is my catechism. I had to write one in college, which is super fun. But I want you guys to use this to answer those two questions, and we have about 15 more minutes in class, and you should get through the two questions, okay? And both of us will be walking around to answer any questions that you guys may have. Can we write this in first person? What's that? Can we write this in first person? Yeah, totally. Does almost everyone have it? Does anybody need me to repeat the question? Yeah, if you guys are okay with sharing, that'd be great. Yeah. If there's a cup, a print out of 20. What's that? My bad. All good. All good? Okay, let's get started on the first question, on the first two questions. Well, there's only two questions, but we have about 15 or so. Right? You guys get on yes. 840? Okay. And I will be walking around to answer any questions. Just raise your hand and I'll come to you, okay? Yeah. 